10th chapter Leviticus, I have come to the conclusion I have ADHD <laughs> and hypertensive and I get into this and I go every which way. I'm running, chasing after the type or the picture or this. So I'm hoping that I can control myself. Um, this is a subject, it, it's so beautiful that you want to do justice to it. In uh, Leviticus chapter 10, and uh, we're going to get into the actual, uh, start on some of the uh, garment of the priest and so forth. 10th chapter Leviticus. Now, as we look into this, we see that chapter 8 told us that and showed us that it taught submission to God and give, and they had to bring sacrifices. There's five of them. They had to bring these sacrifices to, and they had to be to a certain credibility, it had to be without spot or blemish, and had to be perfect in every measure because they were uh, uh, had to be acceptable to God. And of course, uh, the importance of this is that they had to submit to God's authority. Uh, and this is actually what happens to a Christian when they're saved. Um, the Holy Spirit begins to draw a Christian into the reality that he needs to or she needs to repent of their sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because they're dead in trespasses and sins, uh, they have to have something to intervene to cause that. Uh, in other words, uh, the Holy Spirit in regeneration quickens us and makes us alive. And of course, uh, the, the sacrifices were uh, given out, and of course, uh, they messed that up. The Jews has a continual circular, uh, they get uh, in the good side of God, and then they blow it, and, they, and uh, you see a great depravity there in the Jews, just as well as in their uh, Gentiles. But we find that uh, in the uh, in the workings of these uh, sacrifices, uh, the Lord said it'd be. He finally got so frustrated. He said it'd be better to obey than to sacrifice. And of course, the importance of that. And of course, these are all uh, types and pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the sin offering, especially, and the uh, trespass offering. The one that deals with the guilt and clears your conscience and so forth, uh, all of that. So, uh, and then in the ninth chapter, we see, yeah, thank you. That's a lot better. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't show any color. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we find that the, um, I forgot where is that now. Let's see. Let's, let's read some scripture in the tenth. Now, we've seen, first of all, they had to submit to the authority of God, and then they had to reveal God's glory through their life by obeying, bringing the proper sacrifice. And, of course, uh, this was uh, abused also. And, of course, then we get to chapter 10, and he deals with it there, accepting God's discipline. See? You and I both know that you have children. You can, you can speak to them, and they'll obey. They'll, they'll uh, admit they're wrong and get ahead. And then, but you'll also have those that you uh, spank and correct and rebuke and maybe even holler at sometimes uh, because of frustration, and they won't obey. So the ten chapter is going to deal with. Uh, with the subject of uh, taking and responding to God's uh, chastening and with the have here. It says, in chapter 10, verse 1, And they, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, 
which he commanded them not. In other words, they disobeyed. They didn't give the right uh, offering uh, uh, by fire. And uh, the importance of this is that we got to realize when God says he, we worship him in spirit and truth, it, we worship him in spirit and truth. You can't change the gospel and, and uh, please God. And that's why you're not seeing a lot of things uh, going on in the churches today. When God speaks, because we have been quickened and made alive into him uh, in the regeneration, we have a response that is in obedience because he says that we're sheep and when I, my sheep hear my voice, they follow me. See, that's the importance of this. The, uh, the work that Christ did at the cross gave us a blessing of salvation. But uh, the two sons of Aaron, now the high priest, as soon as they were consecrated, they were put to service. Uh, and that sh shows you as soon as you're saved, you're on the block to serve the Lord and worship him, witness for him, and obey him in the things. He goes on in verse 2, it says, And there went out far from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now, when God swiftly brought judgment, it made an impact on Israel. Sometimes I think uh, when Christians get away with disobeying God in their worship, whatever, or service, whatever it is, and he lets them free of that, doesn't immediately respond to them, uh, they get more brave to do it more often, and then uh, there's a dealing there. And of course, I think every one of us here has got <coughs> probably the stripes where he's chasing us because we're all going to receive that uh, chastening because we're sinners saved by God's grace. And uh, we uh, are more closer to God sometimes than others. And of course, that's the important factor. He says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh, nigh unto thee. And, and then we have to do that. He goes in verse three, and then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me and before all the people. I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. You know, in uh, in this section here, uh, in verse 1 and 2 and 3, we see the sin and the death uh, placed upon uh, uh, Nad uh, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, disobeying, putting, uh, and uh, not giving glory to God in that sacrifice. And then we see that Aaron is totally quiet. Aaron can't have any response other than he knew the, the consequences because uh, Aaron um, knew, knew that God was ju just and he wanted obedience. And of course, uh, we're under grace, but um, I think that sometimes that grace is, uh, is uh, something that uh, we take for granted a lot of times. And, and uh, there's, when the Lord deals with his children and deals with the, his priests, now uh, Aaron's sons were automatically uh, uh, in the priesthood. And uh, we shared with you in First Peter chapter two verse nine of verse five that we're a royal priesthood and we're able to offer up spiritual sacrifices and uh, those things that are there. But he goes on and says, and Moses called uh, Michelle and uh, Eliphaz, yeah, mm. the sons of Uzziah, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them. Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Now, uh, when God is swift, I mean, his wrath poured out and uh, dealt with that issue there. Now, uh, the orders were given out in verses uh, four through seven here 
about the funeral and the mourning and all that, and and how that they grieved over the death. And of course, um, Aaron being a father, uh, and of course, Mrs. Aaron will say, uh, they were just human beings and they loved their children. Probably uh, dealt with uh, the, the disobedience a lot in the home and that so forth. Verse five, so they went near and carried them in, in their coats out of the camp as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron and uh, unto Eliezer and unto Ithamar, his sons, uncover not your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die, unless wrath came upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the mourning which the Lord hath kindled. Now, because he didn't want it, these uh, two sons to be uh, in, in grieving over them, their death, it was, uh, it was actually, uh, he forbid them. He says, you, you pay homage to them. And I think uh, if we get some uh, knowledge, uh, I think some of the crimes and some of the things that are done in our society is that they want attention on themselves. And and we see here Moses taking that away. And he says, if you, if you do it, you're dead too. Now, uh, that would be pretty weighty if, uh, uh, if Moses come out and said that. And of course, Moses had the responsibility to do that uh, because uh, he was their leader in that. And in verse seven, he said, and you shall go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. In other words, they obeyed. And of course, that was a continual trait of Israel. And when God would react to them, uh, and maybe as he did here, uh, they would obey for a short time. Now, um, the importance of this is that uh, God wanted Israel to be a holy nation. And because remember the reason that uh, these here sacrifices were given because God made a proclamation, you had to be as holy as he is holy. And of course, uh, he did the same thing over in the New Testament. But we have the Holy Spirit within us. And if we can feed that Holy Spirit and be obedient, uh, we will uh, fulfill our responsibility in that fashion, in that measure here. But he goes now in verse uh, 8 through verse 11, and he commands the priest not to drink wine when they went into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, to minister that. Uh, he goes on and says here in, in uh, chapter uh, 10, he says in verse uh, 9, he says, drink not wine nor strong drink thou nor the sons with thee when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a, uh, a statuette forever throughout our generations. Now, it's interesting here, every sacrifice that was brought had to have a drink offering and that was strong wine. So the wine was used uh, for the ceremonial representation of the offerings and uh, they were different ones for different uh, situations. But when it was uh, for a funeral, he didn't want them to celebrate, I guess, or whatever it is, but he, he tells them pretty frankly here to drink, not wine. And he says, and he says, and that you may put together between holy and unholy and between unclean and, un and clean. In other words, he didn't want the two sons to be honored because uh, it was a dishonor what they did and their death was uh, because of disobedience. And he was setting a pattern. When Israel would obey, they would be blessed. When they would disobey, they would be chastened. And of course, that's the whole uh, crutch of the uh, nation of Israel and what they was to be doing. Now, 
he goes on in verse 11 here. He says, and that ye may teach the children of Israel. Now, can you imagine uh, a child seeing their uncle uh, blasted by the wrath of God because they were offering and being disobedient? That, that got some attention, and uh, it would get my attention. And sometimes that's the only thing that get, <coughs> gets the attention of, uh, of those uh, children and uh, offsprings that were there. Now, now Moses begins to, uh, to uh, uh, in verse uh, 12 here, he, he comes out and, and Moses spake unto Aaron and said unto Eliezer, he's the priest, he says unto uh, Elithinamar, his sons that were left, take the meat offering and remain, uh, and a remain that remaineth of the offering of the Lord made by far and eat it without uh, leaven beside the uh, altar for it is most holy. So he brought and, and brought them to the point of uh, taking the, remember the meat offering or meal offering was the only one that was not a blood offering and, uh, and uh, it was five different areas there was ground flour, and there was uh, baked cakes and fried cakes and uh, things that were uh, brought to that. And, and that was their, the way they would celebrate the death of the unholy uh, means of uh, the two sons. Now, um, this is the basically the whole part, portion of the chapter. And I want you to take and... Uh, I'm going to make sure I got everything up here. Uh, the uh, importance of uh, what, uh, and I got mine down there. Go get your high priest uh, outfit and everything. I got, the scriptures are off to the side there. So we're going to take and uh, look at those. And, um, and we'll probably uh, get uh, to some of them uh, tonight uh, in Exodus chapter 28, it's our first section here. Exodus chapter 28, and we're going to go to verse 36. And it's going to deal with the uh, uh, turban. And on that, <clears throat> on that turban, there was uh, holy to the Lord. And it's all in caps. This is one of the few places in the Old Testament. Is all in caps, and of course, this is uh, representative of Jehovah, the, uh, the all powerful, all knowing, all uh, uh, sovereign God. And he says in the 28th chapter, verse 36, let me get it here, verse 36, he says here in verse 36, and thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and uh, grave upon it, like the engravings of the senate. Uh, signet, rather, holiness to the Lord. And then remember, uh, God is holy, and he's so holy that he, he can't look at sin. He can't. That's why he was so, uh, uh, come out so vehemently towards the uh, Benadad and by, uh, by uh, the two sons of Aaron. I'll get them straight here. Uh, holy, uh, to the Lord. And of course, uh, the importance of this is that um, this was insignia that was put upon the, as you see there, that band going around there. Now, it's interesting that um, that um, th this was put upon the headdress of the uh, high priest. Now, the turban or the mitra uh, was, uh, as you see here, it was white and also, it represented the, um, uh, when, you, when you go to the cross there, you're representative of uh, the, uh, what Christ uh, was there when he put the crown of thorns upon his head. And of course, this is important because uh, the white shows that the uh, righteousness or the purity 
of uh, the headship of God. And, and of course, uh, we find here that uh, the importance of these uh, uh, pieces of uh, garments of the priest was that they were used uh, to represent certain things. And of course, holy to, to the Lord was uh, representative of, uh, uh, of God's holiness. And of course, um, we know that when Moses seen the hind part of uh, God, and he was, his, uh, uh, his face was shining and he couldn't had to put a, a sack over his head because of that. Now, uh, there's another thing that's important here. It was on the priest uh, crown up there, that gold fan going across there. But now, when he came here upon the earth and and went to Calvary in that, uh, the uh, I think it's the 14th chapter, and I got my thing down there, 14th chapter there, this uh, holy to the Lord is going to be on the bridles, uh, the bridle there in the uh, in the when the Lord comes back on the horse's bridle, and uh, this, this is important because the priest was representing the headship of uh, of uh, 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 in responsibility and obedience to the the uh, Lord, and and Jesus Christ was the head over not only the Jews, but the Gentiles. And you see that split there. Uh, uh, he was going to be also the uh, king over a, a divided nation of, uh, of the Jews, uh, the northern and the southern section, uh, Israel, and so forth. So um, these all were representative of uh, prophecy really coming true uh, about it. And of course, uh, when he's coming back as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that is going to be uh, a, a blessing uh, for all that take place there. 14th chapter there. Um, um, I think I got, let me get, I got to go down and get my outline here. I just turned it upside down there. Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. I went and laid him out and left him. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, during in the fourteenth chapter, there it says that they, uh, they uh, on their bridle, on their bridles of the horses, uh, on their uh, halter and the bridle there, they had the same insignia, uh, and it, it speaks about Christ and the uh, that section of Revelations coming back on the white horse and and uh, it talks about his coming. And of course, uh, this priesthood here was temporary. Uh, the And of course, you and I were uh, in the priesthood of the believers now because of what Christ fulfilled and all that was there and it given us that, uh, that accreditation and that. Of course, it was uh, on uh, what Christ had done there uh, and in that, let's go over to First Peter chapter two verse five, talking about it a lot. First Peter chapter two verse five, it talks about us being a royal priest uh, hood and the uh, holy nation. Says here, okay, first be at second. I'll get it here in a minute, excuse me. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, You are also a, uh, our lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. 
First Peter chapter two, verse five, and, and uh, by Jesus or through Jesus Christ. Uh, and of course, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, he ought to lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, the elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. The importance of this, and of course the blessings of you and I being able to go in because the veil was rent and that was uh, the body, representative of the body of Christ and his body was rent uh, so we would ha have access into the holiest of holies where the God, the Shekinah glory came down and was come in between the, the two uh, the two chairs there uh, on the mercy seat and of course the blessings that are all there and we'll get to the furniture later but uh, as we see here this uh, holiness and of course the Jesus fulfilled this responsibility because he was a sweet savor uh, offering that was uh, had at the cross uh, he, when he died there um, that was acceptable unto a holy God and it was a come up to him as a sweet savor and smell uh, unto him because it was satisfying uh, it was per a perfect sacrifice he fulfilled the uh, the sin offering he fulfilled the uh, the different offerings that were listed there that they had to bring in uh, usually was a bullock or a sheep uh, without spot or blemish that was uh, recognized as a uh, an appeasement for uh, for another year and the great day of atonement there when a high priest would go in before uh, God in his presence in the holiest of holies in there so but the mitre was a uh, was a uh, crowning uh, aspect there and of course it was uh, something that was uh, a blessing uh, to that let's go look at the mitre because the mitre is uh, dealing with the same thing uh, there uh, and it, it's sometimes interchanged the 28th chapter verse 4 of Exodus 28 verse verse 4 and verse 39 28th chapter verse Verse 4 and verse 29. He says here in 28 chapter verse 4, he says, And there are garments which uh, they shall make a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, uh, and a broidered coat, a mitre, a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in them priest office now they had to wear these clothes they had to have these outfits on when they went in because they represented so much of uh, what God's character is and of course the different things and of course it showed obedience uh, to what uh, he wanted them to have there he says in verse 39 go over to verse 39 now he says here in verse 39 he says and thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen, and thou shalt make a mitre of fine linen. Then uh, that shalt thou uh, the girdle of the needlework. Now, the needlework, I, I didn't look this up, but it's, it's almost like it was knitted into real close uh, strength, a strong uh, thing, because it was representing uh, certain uh, elements there in the head. And of course, the uh, crown uh, uh, that Jesus wore at the cross was a uh, uh, representative of the curse that was put, of sin that was put upon the earth. Because uh, you remember when Adam uh, sinned there in the garden, he said, it said there that uh, all that came up, the, the earth was cursed with thorns. And thistles, and uh, the, these thorns uh, uh, were placed on our Savior's forehead and mashed down. And of course, uh, he uh, uh, was a bloody mess before they ever got to the other portion 
there nailing him on the cross there. But they were mocking his kingship. And of course, the mitre here was representative of reestablishing. Uh, he's the king and king, Lord of Lords. But he was not that yet. He wasn't crowned that until there at the cross there uh, when he accomplished our atonement uh, for our sins and the blessings that we have there. Now, as you go on, you get down to the next section, and the uh, next section deals with the breastplate and the 12 uh, stones. Now, these stones are a representative of the uh, tribe here. Let's get it to 28 chapter, verse 15. Verse 15, he's going to give us the stones and the colors. I've, uh, I didn't have the color on my print there you got in front of, but um, I can give you what I wrote out to the side there. Uh, it was, a, okay, the first section, he goes on in here and says, in uh, this breastplate, uh, this breastplate was a, uh, it was held up by two gold chains that slipped through uh, little uh, sockets on the side of the priest's uh, shoulders that had uh, onyx on top of them. And uh, when it slid through, it would slide through and stop. The onyx stones would stop at the, uh, it's like a slip and would catch. And the kids, of course, this is a beautiful picture of a lot of different things uh, in this. And the unity uh, that was uh, in this section here. 28th chapter and verse 15. He says here, uh, 15, he says, And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment. Now, what they call this breastplate of judgment, the priest had these stones representative of 12 tribes it was uh, four square it was uh, three wide and four d down and it was right on the front part as you see there and it was uh, loose it was uh, there and it hung upon the uh, actually the uh, urim and the thermon uh, actually was behind it holding it stable upon the priest's chest area there but he goes on it says here he says the work of the ephod that thou shalt make it of gold blue and purple of scarlet and then fine uh, twine linen uh, uh, shalt thou make it four square it shall be being doubled a span shall be length thereof and a span shall be the breadth thereof and thou shalt set it in settings of stone each four rows of stones, and first row shall be a sardis, a, a topaz, and a car, carbuckle. Now, the corresponding colors there, uh, the light blue would be almost like a turquoise color, but it wasn't quite turquoise there. And of course, it was, uh, that was the uh, tribe of Levi, now, this here has Levi uh, in here, and it also has Joseph in here. But in the original <laughs> breastplate that was up on the high priest, Levi was taken out, and Joseph's two sons were put in, in, in this. And, uh, of course, that would be the emerald, the first one coming up. Uh, and, of course, the next one is, the, uh, is a light green color. And it's uh, the tribe, and I couldn't read that, so uh, I'll read the scriptures here, and maybe you can pick it up and put it in there for me. It says, a sardis to a topaz carbuckles, the first row. So uh, in the second row, uh, he says here, he shall be the first row. The second row shall be an emerald, uh, a, a sapphire, and a diamond. In the third row, shall be a, a uh, shall the third row a ligure, linger, ligure, ligure, an agate, and a uh, a methyset, a methyset. He says in the fourth row, a barrel, 
onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their uh, enclosings. Now each, each stone had a place uh, that was uh, where they were set in. And, and when, the, if the, uh, say the tribe of Levi was going to be judged by God, the priest had, and by the way, the, I, the priest had to be there on every occasion. And he had to be there and representative. He had to be the representative. Of course, this is a, this is a wonderful picture of how Christ is our advocate. And remember, the advocacy is the only way that uh, we can uh, approach God uh, because we are sinners saved by grace through faith. But we find the importance of uh, the Aaron uh, showing up each time there was a judgment. That's why they called it the uh, uh, the judgment. Uh, the what it was that I read there <laughs> talking about the judgment, breastplate of judgment. And of course, the importance of this is that uh, accountability. And uh, and of course, we have. Jesus Christ is our advocate or go-between. You and I, when we do any praying or anything, we have to go through the Lord. And, uh, of course, uh, there's no salvation other than in his name. And, of course, it's through him because he is the one that gave his life for my sins and your sins. And, therefore, he is my advocate. He's your advocate uh, because... Uh, and there's no no uh, possibility of uh, uh, mistakes here because Jesus knows he sheep he laid down his life for you and I that are saved and he knows them and they follow him and of course he is the one that uh, is making intercessory for us now this is such a beautiful picture of uh, of uh, chastisement in which you and I when we disobey and that's what happened Israel was continually having a problem <coughs> of uh, getting in trouble with disobeying the Lord and uh, he would tell them what they could do on different occasions so I'm going to stop there I'm starting to lose my voice really bad so uh, but the uh, we'll go back and, and get into that and I like to get the color on them I could rather read if we can get this color there. But the importance of this, we have a high priest, and we're priests, uh, able to offer spiritual sacrifices. Now, is there an earthly priesthood uh, like it was back in Israel's time? No. Uh, we're just a representative. It's interesting here that Whenever there was something going on uh, and they had to eat the uh, sacrifice, uh, the, uh, the heads of the homes, the heads of the, the male uh, leaders of the homes would have to bring that sacrifice and many times they would eat it uh, also and uh, share it with them. So we'll get back to some more next week.